News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. VEA Members for Change gives an update on their cause. And Clark County holds a 911 video contest for students. News 25 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 25 with Unet Gentry. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 25. Local coverage you can count on. The Members for Change group serves notice to Valley Electric Association. It's Tuesday, April 16th. I'm Unette Gentry. Ken Johnson from the Valley Electric Association Members for Change gives an update on the group's efforts to recall the board of directors following the co-op's electrical and broadband rate increase. On Tuesday morning at 8.30 a.m., uh, representatives from the Members for Change petition group uh, served Valley Electric with over 2,100 uh, petition signatures calling for the recall. Uh, you know, the meeting to have the process, to have the opportunity uh, to recall the board. Some people think we're just, ra you know, out of control, want them out, but what we want is the process to evaluate whether they should stay or not uh, by the meeting. So that was done. Um, we had notified the board uh, before that and heard nothing back as usual. Uh, so uh, we did, uh, were able to retain a legal counsel to represent our group. Um, we had asked the board to provide that at the company expense since they're spending our money on their side, uh, but no response as usual. Uh, so Shumway Van, a multi-state law firm out of Las Vegas, was gracious enough to uh, be willing to help us, uh, so they've stepped up. Uh, since we delivered the petitions, there are two issues uh, that are being discussed, uh, which we find kind of crazy. Uh, one is the directors, I guess, according to the bylaws, believe that the petition has to be circulated per district, is what they're arguing, and then you have to get the 10% per district in order to call for the recall. Uh, the bylaws clearly in eighth grade English say otherwise, that it's just any member can bring charges against a director. Uh, our attorney believes that we're interpreting the bylaws correctly. The audit, and we've said this from the very beginning, an audit's gonna show you money in, money out. Um, it, it's not, they're not prosecutors. They're not gonna say whether something's illegal or not. And also if somebody says, hey, here's a severance package, um, as long as that dollar figure is what is declared, that's all the auditors are concerned about. So it's money in, money out, does it all balance? So the audit in, in our minds was always a bit of a farce. Uh, and again, they get to conduct it without, you know, any outsiders present. So uh, we, we don't think that's a big thing either way. Uh, as far as the reinstatement of Mrs. Evans, uh, we had a post today on our Facebook page basically that we believe it's irresponsible for Valley Electric while the Sheriff's Department is still actively investigating uh, for them to come out and say, we investigated ourselves and we're innocent. There's no wrongdoing here. Look away. You know, it, so on the one side, they're telling us, well, don't count somebody guilty before they're proven guilty. Uh, so then we would say, wait a minute, the same thing applies to the other side. Let's let the process work. And while they're innocent until proven guilty, people are still under investigation, active investigation. And obviously there was enough smoke that the Sheriff's Department was able to serve uh, a warrant and arrest somebody. Uh, so there has to be something there. Clark County has 30 full-time fire stations, which staffs 700 employees and 13 volunteer fire stations with 200 volunteer firefighters in rural areas. The fire department also maintains an urban search and rescue team. They provide services to more than 2 million residents and more than 45 million visitors annually. A recent contest seeks to bring awareness to the public to let them know when and when not to call 911 so that they can better serve the public. 
The Clark County Fire Department recently held an event appealing to the greater Las Vegas community to learn when to and when not to call 911 emergency services. Facing almost 135,000 calls for service annually, students from the 911 program at the Veterans Tribute Career and Technical Academy produced videos for dissemination on social media platforms. A panel of local news media outlets reviewed the productions and chose their top three. Clark County Commissioners Marilyn Kirkpatrick and Lawrence Weekly, along with County Fire Chief Greg Cassell and County Digital Media Specialist Chris Erickson, picked from the group to name the winning spot to be used as part of a local outreach effort. Chief Cassell says that our residents should only call 911 when they have a life-threatening fire, police, or medical emergency. Otherwise, you can call 311. Calls that should not be made to 911 include sprained ankles, minor colds, the weather, traffic tickets, noisy neighbors, and complaints about fast food drive through employees. An inappropriate call to 911 has the potential to delay a dispatcher from getting emergency responders out the door as quickly as possible. In a worst case scenario, that can cost someone his or her life. County Commissioner Chairman Marilyn Kirkpatrick agreed. She said that she's thrilled that these students can help spread the word. The winning video is shared on county social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The community is encouraged to share it with others and use the hashtag call 911 right to help raise awareness about this important public safety issue. For more information, you can go to the Clark County website at clarkcountynv.gov. Here's Ashley Kimmer, who is a contest winner from Group 8. Without 911, residents don't have a direct link to emergency situations, and the turnout rate for people in the um, 911 field is very low. A lot of people don't stay in it very long, so by like us starting now and educating, we really get an idea of what it's going to be like. We learn about like the stress that comes with it and what's really important about it, so we kind of already know what we're getting into. In today's Business First Brief, Angela Miles discusses the devastating damage of a major world icon. Tapping our news, the painful and devastating process of investigating and rummaging through the destruction of Notre Dame Cathedral. The structure was under renovation just before a fire broke out yesterday. Goldman Sachs took a hit this week after acknowledging that its first quarter revenue was below analyst views. The Wall Street firm's revenue dropped 13 percent to $3.2 billion as Goldman's trading abilities came up short. The bank cut employee compensation and benefits by 20 percent last quarter. Citigroup surprised analysts with higher than predicted earnings. The bank's revenue declined, but Citi cut costs and increased its investment banking business. The Trump tax cuts also gave that big bank a margin lift. And the tiger effect already has the golf industry pumped. Shares of golf stock Callaway and Tiger sponsor Nike rallied. And when News 25 returns, we'll have the latest details surrounding the Notre Dame fire. We'll be right back. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, it took 12 hours to extinguish the flames raging through the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral in France. Officials say the cathedral itself is still standing, fortunately, and is structurally sound. The destroyed spire that stood atop the historic church was engulfed in flames and unfortunately crumbled in Monday's blaze. Most of the roof of the 800-year-old Catholic monument has been destroyed. The devastating fire, which began on the rooftop during major construction, is being investigated as an accident. Dozens of fire investigators are no longer on scene after more than 500 firefighters mopped up that massive fire, putting out hot spots and embers to ensure that no further damage is done to the masterpiece symbolizing culture and religion there in France. There's now a fundraising campaign to begin repairs, which might take several years. Notre Dame, a celebrated symbol of medieval architecture, began construction in 1163 and was completed in 1345. The cathedral is located on an island in the center of Paris as an end is visited by more than 13 million people annually. 
The 2019 Tour of Honor Memorial sites have been announced, and Pahrump, fortunately, is on this year's list. The Tour of Honor is a season-long event and fundraiser to honor our nation's heroes. The self-directed tour allows participants to visit as many sites as they would like in the continental U.S., Alaska, and Hawaii. And now here's Dr. Tom Waters with more information on that ride, which began April 1st. This is a, a nationwide. What they do is they, they, they send out the ad for all riders, any motorcycle riders, and they can join this. And then on the 1st of April, they get the locations around the country. They select locations, and this is the first year Pahrump has been selected. Wow. And they're going out to memorials across, around the country, and they wanted to come out and see our veterans memorial. Well, it's not like uh, they're going to come in here all at one time. Mm -hmm. This is from mid-April, so we, we chose April 15th instead of the 1st of April, and it'll go through October 31st. So they may come in in onesies and twosies. They may come in by 20. We never know how many are coming or when they're coming. But they have, they have so, so many that they have to attend before this is all over. It's a fundraiser, and it's for, for veterans and first responders. And it's for the charities that they do for them. They will not let us know when they're coming in. We will know when they're coming in because we're, sent, we're doing everything th through the tourism office. Yeah. And the tourism office will have flyers at the cemetery. So if they come in, say, at midnight or mm -hmm. say early in the morning or other times or on weekends and nobody's there yeah. then they'll be able to pick up the flyers and know where to go mm -hmm. so some of the things we're looking for is for businesses uh, maybe to give them discounts when they come through they'll have something to show that they're a uh, tour of honor riders wow. and uh, if businesses want to get in on this that'd be perfect uh, we're also doing as much uh, fundraising as we can because we like to have a banner up uh, the entire time We've already purchased the banners, so of course we, now we have to pay for them. We're going to put them at the cemetery or at the memorial. The banner will be up. It'll be one banner, and we bought two because we know before October that one's probably going to fade. So we have two banners, and uh, Matt Lewis is going to make sure they're in the right place. And then when the Tour of Honor riders come through, they take pictures, and then they post that on their Facebook page. Wonderful. And people can find out more by going on to the Tour of Honor riders Facebook page or on the web. They can do that, or they can contact our tourism office here mm -hmm. and just contact uh, Alex and uh, Alex Crow at 775-727-2814. Unfortunately, Clark County is the number one county in the country for syphilis. And it's not something worth celebrating on today, National Syphilis Awareness Day. The Southern Nevada Health District says the rate of 24 cases per 100,000 people includes congenital syphilis or syphilis present at birth, which is over 76 cases per 100,000 live births. The sexually transmitted infection causes sores near the genitals or rectum, as well as around the lips or in the mouth. Untreated, the infection can spread to the brain, nervous system, and even the eye. This is not the only preventable disease that unfortunately has been increasing over the years. Clark County ranks well above the national average for other sexually transmitted infections, including chlamydia, gonorrhea, and HIV. And stay tuned, we'll be right back with much more local news here at KPVM. News 25 is brought to you by Bill and Robin Law, injury attorneys. Injured? Need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. Welcome back. Well, the Shadow Mountain Quilters had another successful fiber arts show entitled Pins and Needles that was held recently at Nevada Treasure RV Resort. The show is amazing. Yeah. yeah, we have had so many people, yeah. and there's honestly, it's still like we're winding down here on Saturday afternoon, and it's still just a buzz. There are still people coming in the door. It's two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Our main event, the bed turning, is happening right now. Yeah. People are always excited about that. The bed turning is where a bunch of people contribute quilts that have been in their family for years, and they have little stories about them. So one by one, the quilts are exposed, the story is shared, and then they're folded down, and then the next quilt comes up. We've been we've actually been selling tickets for about a year 
and um, there are lots of tickets available yet. It only takes one to win. Yeah. Tickets are a dollar a piece or a book of six for five dollars. We have some local people um, that, are, that are local vendors. This year all of our vendors are quilt related. Um, the Penny chain, pocket change, I think, is from Las Vegas. We have the Quilted Dragon from here, Red Rock Threads, and Hubster from Calvada. Yeah. So they're here with us too today. And we have one lady from Minnesota who has her 108 quilt backings. Awesome. So, yeah, and that's important. If you quilt, you know you got to have a wide back. We have a massage lady here too. Um, she's she's given like little bits of massage here and there, a dollar a minute. And last night I had a foot massage at the end of the day, and it was lovely. <laughs> This one is our opportunity quilt. Uh, we set out, it took us almost a year. We first started designing it with the up, up, and away, and we decided on a tornado. And then we went to purchase all the beautiful fabrics in it, started piecing it. Uh, Snooky drew it out and then figured the diagram as to how much we needed to make a quilt this size. We got it all pieced. And then she is a wonderful quilter and she did the quilting. And if you look closely at it, since it's up, up and away, you'll see a flying witch, a flying pig, um, a unicorn, a flying house, all kinds of things like that quilted within the quilting of the uh, entire quilt. Uh, just the two of us worked on this one. Uh, only because everyone looked at it and said, oh no, I don't think so. <laughs> but it turned out to be a really nice quilt. We had thoroughly enjoyed putting this quilt together. Uh, it started from scratch, saying, well, up, up and away, what goes up? Well, a tornado goes up. And then Snooky is a wonderful designer, and she started sketching. And we come up with all kinds of sketches, and this is the one we decided on. So, I mean, it was a real learning experience for me because I had never done something like this from this kind of scratch. I normally work from a pattern. So it, it was just really wonderful working with her and seeing the whole thing come together. It is a fundraiser. We take the quilt throughout the year to different places, um, different quilting shows such as this, and um, just different activities in, in towns. And we take it and we sell raffle tickets. And we always start out at the Henderson Show. That's right, this May, 25 years, six women met in my sewing room and uh -huh. never dreamed that we'd be so big now. Yeah. Right? And 25 years later, it's yeah. hard to have fabric with smoke because this fabric just absorbs it and people don't like that in their quilts. I'm amazed that it, it yeah. it's gone from something yeah. so humble beginnings to this. So. Yeah. All right, and in today's student news, Veronica De La Rosa is telling us about some events coming up soon at Pahrump Valley High School. Hi, I'm Veronica De La Rosa, and this is your student news. The U.S. Air Force Band of the Golden West, Travis Brass, will be performing here in the Pahrump Valley High School Auditorium, April 18th at 7.30 p.m. Free tickets can be reserved at travisbrasspvhs.eventbrite.com. Also, there's a bilingual center for health that offers group therapy, therapy, <laughs> neurofeedback, social skills training, hygiene and self-care, relaxation and communication. Free services can be made for certain insurance recipients and you can contact them at 775-727-0334. The Martin Luther King Foundation will be hosting a fashion show this Saturday, April 20th, at the Bob Rood Community Center. It's off of Basin and One City, and it starts at 3.30 p.m. Tickets are $5. Contact Linda McLaughlin at 775-671-6127 for more information. The Miss Front Pageant is coming up soon. The event will be held June 15th at the Saddle West Hotel and Casino here in Crump. Please pick up a packet in the main office if you would like to enter. Contestants need to be 13 through 18 years old. For more information, contact them at 775-727-4374 or contact them through their Facebook page. This has been Veronica Dolorosa, your student news.
News 46 Weather Cam is brought to you by Glenn Lerner Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, grab those umbrellas. It might still be sprinkling a bit outside. Let's take a look at our current conditions. Look at those dark, ominous clouds framing the mountains of Pahrump, and there's nothing but shadows over the ground. And so we'll take a closer look at how much more precipitation we can expect here in Pahrump and over the hump going back to Las Vegas when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Welcome back. Let's take a look at our forecasts around Nevada today. Las Vegas tops out at 68 degrees for the high and will drop to 54 for the low tonight. Death Valley's high today, 75 with a low of 59. Amargosa tops out at 62 degrees with a low of 48. Beatty also tops out at 62, but dropping to 44 for the low. Goldfield's high, 55 with a low of 33. Tonopah tops out at a chilly 53 for the high and drops to a low of 32 overnight. Carson City's high for the day, 57 degrees, with a low of 35. Both Fallon and Fernley top out at 60 degrees for the high today. Fallon's low, 35, and Fernley increases one degree to 36 for the overnight low. And currently it's 61 degrees here in Pahrump with a moderate UV index of 6. We expect a 50% chance of rain. Again, today's high, 62 with winds out of the northwest at 13 miles per hour. Humidity, of course, is high at 47 percent. Sunrise was at 6.09 a.m. this morning. And it will be partly cloudy tonight with a low of 47. Winds will be out of the north northeast at 8 miles per hour. Humidity increases to 54 percent. And sunset will be at 7.18 p.m. Looking ahead at our seven-day forecast, Wednesday, the sun will come out again with a high of 80 and a low of 53. And Thursday will increase to 85 degrees for the high with a low of 59. But unfortunately, the clouds return on Friday with temperatures increasing to 88 for the high and 61 for the low. But we'll have a sunny weekend with Saturday's high of 86, low of 57. And Sunday, the sun remains in the sky, but those temperatures drop a bit to 80 for the high, 57 for the low. The beginning of our work week will be sunny as well, with a high of 83 on Monday, low of 60, and temperatures increase to 87 degrees on Tuesday, and it remains sunny with a low of 63 overnight. Well, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Unette Gentry. Good night.